Yo, what's good, YouTube man? It's Gabe with another fan TV. Back at another video. Like the content of this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Like the content of this channel, go ahead and subscribe, man. Look, we gotta talk about a couple things regarding Lamar Jackson. All right, first off, that leaked contract that Adam Schefter put out there on his podcast gave the contract that we've already heard a lot about um, a little bit more context and details. All right, then we gotta talk about the potential list of suitors that's still active and available for Lamar Jackson after these first. Uh, I would say day and a half of free agency, all right? A lot of stuff can still happen. A lot, of, a lot of moving parts of free agency, so it can change at any moment. But let's talk about the contract, right? As they came out with his uh, his report yesterday on his podcast, uh, he kind of had a, the, the contract broken down into details we haven't necessarily heard before. Now, the 133 at signing, we've heard that number. The 175 um, is new, so it's $175 million, right? And that's if he has some practical guarantees and the practical clauses in there, some injury guarantees in there. If he meets those, he gets 175. Then it's a 200 million if he's on the roster. I think he said the fifth day of 2026, something like that, right? I think the fifth day of the league year, 2026. Okay, so that's the contract that Mar Jackson turned down. All right, so let's talk about the contract. The 133 assignment is more than Kyler Murray. The 175 is technically more than Kyler Murray as well, who got 165, but then they added his fifth-year option, which brought it up to 189. So if you said if you do the same thing with Lamar Jackson, if he would have signed, then you add that 23 million he made last year, it would have been 198. Okay, all right, so cool, we got that. The 200 million, they go up to 200 million, it's still more. All right, uh, but I will say this: I can understand why Lamar Jackson turned that contract down. All right, the 133 is signing; he doesn't feel like that's enough. All right, that's his prerogative, that's his opinion. But I think what it really is, is the entry guarantees to get to 175. All right, now, I, now Lamar Jackson has been hurt the last couple of years, um, but also I think it's more about a principal thing with Lamar Jackson, all right? He's put his body on the line for the Ravens. He's been, he's been asked to be QB1 and RB1 for the Ravens, and they're asking him to put injury clauses in his contract so he can get his money, all right? And understandably, he could be like, no, I, I don't want that. I want something where I get my money regardless, right? I've been a player. I've showed up. I've played through injuries and things like that, all right? Now, the last couple of years, he's had injuries he couldn't play through, but, you know, he's an NFL player. Obviously, he's been nicked up. He's had stuff that he's probably just gutted out and played through, okay? So, at this point, it feels like it's more of a respect thing and a principal thing with Lamar Jackson. Is the contract, the contract is, is good money, right? It's good money. Like, it's more than Colin Murray, more than Russell Wilson, uh, but it's not reaching that tier that he wants to get it into, right? Um, that's also saying that the what the Ravens put in the contract is not um, abnormal. Other teams have done the same thing. So uh, maybe this is something where you like, all right, you know, other teams can get, to, get away with this, but Lamar Jackson is not going for it. And this is the difference between talking to an agent and talking to a player directly, right? An agent can make that sound good and smooth it over. If the player don't like it, he don't like it. Lamar Jackson is his own man, so he don't like it, Okay. Um, I think the Ravens got to come higher at the with the with the guarantee that signing they get that number up. If they remove the practical guarantees and let him get that 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 money that he he's looking for, I don't think that it's going to be two hundred fifty million dollars or nothing. I don't I don't think that's the case, right? Just hearing the details of that contract, in my opinion, it sounds like the injury guarantees put him off. You know, that, that's just what I got from him when I first grasped it, all right? Um, he wants to be able to get what he feels like he deserves without having to have those caveats in it, even if those caveats are standard in other contracts, all right? Whether that's fair or not, that's how he feels, okay? Um, so as far as the contract goes, I guess it was cool getting more detailed analysis, more detailed information on it, but it really doesn't change anything. Um, he turned the contract down. And honestly, that sounded like the contract offer that was from back in September. So for all we know, the Ravens could have had an improved offer by now. And he still doesn't like whatever is in it. So um, the contract leaking is it is what it is at this point. Um, it makes sense, though. If teams are going to try to bid on Lamar Jackson, they need to know what he wants. So another team could have found out what he wanted, probably from the Ravens, right? And said, okay, this is what he wanted. This is what he turned down. All right, so now we know what we're going to do in our negotiation if we decide to go that route. So it makes sense that the details are coming out right now. All right. Um, so now, now that we talk about the contract, let's talk about the potential shooters that still left for Lamar Jackson. Because a lot of teams backed out uh, last week, right? And we were like, oh, no, they're, they're, they're lying. They're, 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 not, they're really interested in Lamar Jackson. They're, they're just saying that, right? 
Uh, well, some of these teams are backing up their actions and, and they're out of the market, it seems like. So, like, the first team, right, the Dolphins, right? They picked up Tua's fifth-year option. They signed Mike White to be the backup quarterback. To me, these are moves that are saying, like, we're not trading. We we, we got our QBs here. You know, it's going to be Tua. Tua gets hurt. We got Mike White. Okay? Uh, the Panthers, they just traded for number one all number one overall pick, right? They got rid of their star wide receiver and DJ Moore in the process. So they're either going to take CJ Stroud, Bryce Young. I know Anthony Richards isn't getting a lot of buzz, but if I had to guess, I'm thinking CJ Stroud is the guy. So they want to start over with somebody young, somebody who's not going to cost them a lot of money right now, and they can build the team up from there. All right. Uh, Frank Wright is a good QB developer, so it makes sense for them to go that route. Okay. The Falcons was a very popular team. Uh, they were interested and they were out. Um, yeah, they, they backed that up, all right? They, they signed Taylor Heineken for agency. They spent a whole bunch of money for agency already, um, giving out a lot of money to a lot of different players. So uh, they still have a lot. They still have a ton of cash space, which is crazy. I think, the cap, I think they said that the Falcons still have about $50 million in cash space. But um, so it's not as much as they had before. I think they had around, I don't know, 70, 80, something like that. So not as much as before, but still a lot of cash space left. Um, but like I said, they added Taylor Holly Key to the to their quarterback room, and they're probably going to rock out with Desmond Ritter. All right, they traded for John Lewis Smith, two tight end offense, keep it simple for him, run the ball, play action, help him out like that. All right, um, so that that team to me will be off the board. Um, the Raiders, the Raiders signed Jimmy Garoppolo. Okay, he has experience with Josh McDaniel coming from the Patriots. Um, that's just like a natural fit. They out. Uh. The Patriots were the Patriots ironically were a team that people thought might be in it, but they said that they're out of the, the Lamar Jackson race, right? Um I'm not sure how much I believe it, but if I had to think about it, they brought back Bill O'Brien. He got familiarity with the Patriots. They they like Mac Jones. So I think they're out of it. Okay. Now I could talk about teams that I think could be in it that the Ravens still have to watch out for. And um I think that first team is the commanders, right? It's not really about cat space with the commanders. It's, it's really more about the unpredictability of Dan Snyder. Okay, Dan Snyder is not a very well liked owner amongst the owners, amongst the fan base. Um, not many people walking around seem to like Dan Snyder. Okay, but he still is currently the owner of the commanders, and as the owner, he can say, "Hey, look, before I before I check out of here, I'm gonna give Lamar Jackson whatever he wants, and then I'm gonna leave another owner to to have to foot the bill." This is a rumor that's out there that he could do. Dan Snyder has been known to be petty, childish, spiteful. Any kind of words you want to throw around for Dan Snyder, he's um he's been known to do those kind of things. So that very well could happen, right? Um, is it likely? I don't know. Now they got Sam Howell, who was a fifth round pick last year. Um, he was projected to go way higher than that, honestly, but he went in the fifth round. Uh, he played well in that final game versus the Cowboys, and they could feel like, hey, look, let's give the young guy a shot. He's cheap. Fifth round pick literally cost them no money. Um, so let's give the young guy a shot. All right. Other teams I could see. Now the, the Colts, right? The Colts are in an interesting position, right? They got a high draft pick. They got the number four pick overall. But they're in a spot where they might not get the quarterback of their choosing, right? One and two. Panthers, uh, Texans. Probably both want to go quarterback. It'd be shocking if they choose anybody else, right? Um then you got the Cardinals at three. The Cardinals could very well trade with somebody else that could leapfrog the Colts. Now that's three straight quarterbacks off the board, right? Um, and now the, now the Colts at four, like, they got to pick the fourth choice guy. Um, so now the Colts could very well decide that, look, we got a pretty decent team around here, right? Um, Michael Pittman on offense, John Taylor in the backfield, decent O-line. Let's go, let's go out and make a big splash move and see if we can get Lamar Jackson in the building. Because they have no quarterback that they have to answer to at the moment. They got to be like, well, why did you try to get Lamar Jackson? Well, we don't have anybody. So, okay, makes sense. Uh, and their defense is still uh, pretty good as well. Darius Leonard or Shaquille Leonard. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, but, yeah, so the coach could be an interesting move. Um, do I think they'll do it? Mm, maybe not, right? But it is a team that's out there. So that's why it's kind of hard to find teams that have the cash space that – and can make a move that the Ravens can't match and that will be willing to give the two first round picks. It's um the market has has really shot down. I mean the Ravens made a while it was a very risky move, it seems to be a very well and calculated risk. 
And then the last team I could think of is the Detroit Lions, right? Detroit Lions have two first-round picks. They got number six. They got number 18. If they were to give up two first-round picks, they would be giving up the 18th pick this year and then next year's pick. And they have a good team, the Lions, right? They, you drop a quarterback into there, the, the, the caliber of Lamar Jackson, um, it could be scary. I mean, they got a lot. They got weapons. The defense is – if they can get anything going on on the defensive side of the ball, it's a decent team. It really is a decent team. So those are the three teams I, I could see, but Commanders, Colts, um, Lions. But other than that, it's kind of hard to see these kind of teams making moves. I mean, I know people have mentioned the Bucks before. The Bucks are still negative in the salary cap as we stand right now. Obviously, they can restructure some deals, get change some things around. But as of right now, they're still negative in the salary cap, okay? Um, so it's just hard to see teams with space, picks, and a willingness to do the move. All those factors make it hard to see. Um, now, as for the Ravens, I don't say this as like, uh, I'm happy this is happening to Lamar Jackson. You know, I want him to be the Ravens quarterback, uh, for the future for Ravens quarterback for life. Uh, so it's, it's good for the Ravens. Eric DeCosta and, and, you know, and the front office made a very, very calculated move. And as of right now, the move is paying off, right? Uh, looks like the market is dwindling. Now, this might not be good news for the Ravens though. Because at the end of the day, they still have to negotiate a contract with Lamar Jackson. <laughs> to me, the non-exclusive tag would have been a great move if um, other teams do you negotiate for you. Y'all bridge, they bridge the gap. Cool, we match the offer. But if no team is even going to put an offer out there, it's like the Ravens got Lamar Jackson for the exclusive tag for fourteen million dollars less, right? And if that was the move, then. <laughs> That's a savvy move because if no team makes an offer, then you're really just you and Lamar Jackson negotiating. It's really no different from what's been happening, what's been going on before. It's really the same scenario, same circumstance. Um, and if that's the case, how much faith do I have in the Ravens changing anything up or Lamar Jackson accepting anything less if they've been at a stalemate for this long? Um, so it's interesting, man. You know, reports came out the other day that Lamar Jackson would play on the tag if applied to him. And I just don't understand why, why he would do that. But, you know, who knows? We don't know anything. I mean, it's it's March right now. You know, football season is nowhere close. So, But that's the news on Lamar Jackson. It's interesting anything that's going around. Leak contracts, potential suitors. Um, I probably missed some potential suitors. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, and if you say to this point in the video, uh, go ahead and consider hitting that subscribe button, man. A lot of more Ravens content coming at you. But I'm going to get out of here, man. It's Gabriel. This is another fan TV. I'm out.